our today's speaker, Alberta Danusha. Alberta is an old friend and colleague, uh, uh, and uh, he was working during some time here in Lyon now. Alberta is in Italy, enjoying beautiful place, beautiful weather. So <laughs> I, I am very, I am very happy that it works so well for you. So today, Alberta will present us. Maybe I can say your favorite yeah. topic, or maybe the topic which you established. So you will explain us. Yes, and, yes. Uh, and, uh, yes. My topic will be on behavioral epidemiology. Yeah. I feel that, as you kindly say, the uh, help to, to establish. Yes, and yeah. in particular, I um, will show mainly example where uh, the problem is not only modeling the impact of the change of uh, the behavior of, uh, let's say, subject. Hmm? Well, but, anyway, Alberto, please, you can start your presentation. You are very, very welcome. Yes, exactly. So, uh, we will see example where uh, also the behavior of the impact of behavior of policymakers is included. Of course, this is a joint work with a lot of friends, Piero Manfredi, Bruno Bonomo, Vitali, Malai, Banerji, who is also here, Pierre Alexander Bliman in Paris, and other friends. Okay. Oh. Only as. Oh, okay. So, first, before I forget, I thank you, Vitali, for him virtually inviting me in Moscow. And there is also a link uh, between Trieste and uh, in Moscow, because in both cities, there is a very beautiful church devoted to St. Spiridon. One is in Trieste, one minute walking from my house, and the other is in Moscow. Okay. Oh. Um, the problem of vaccination is a little bit uh, emblematic of uh, a strange phenomena that are typical of contemporary age. Because uh, although the vaccination for a lot of diseases, for example, poliomyelitis, measles, are uh, widely expanded, Basically, only smallpox was eradicated. And uh, what is strange, you can see here that in these two maps, the prevalence of measles, instead of decreasing, is increasing. This is uh, the reason is that uh, it's difficult to eradicate also easy diseases like measles because the vaccine are too successful. What means that they are too excessively successful? Because this means that we are passing, and we definitely passed with the COVID, from a scenario classical of irrational anti-vax, with the ancestral fear of vaccine, to a new and more dangerous scenario, that is the so-called pseudo-rational objection to vaccination. Mm? Even among, among some medical doctors and nurses. For example, a typical reasoning on polio is people say, okay, polio is serious. However, there are very few cases in Italy mm? or France or Russia or uh, Germany. And people say, myopically, why should I vaccinate my children exposing them to vaccine-related side effects? This is a myopic reasoning, is, is pseudo-rational, because the reason <coughs> why there is no more polio, practically, apart from some sporadic cases in two, three states, countries, is because people maximally vaccinate. If people stop vaccinating children, some disease will reappear. This is the case of measles. Huh? Measles was decreasing a lot, but reappeared because a lot of people say, come on, why should I vaccinate, etc., etc. Oh, so 
as you can see what happens. In the time vaccination against measles decreased and what happens, I can see in this, there is a lot of new outbreak, large outbreak of uh, measles. The problem is that reversing this trend is very complex because there is uh, the synergy between two sociological phenomena. The first is post-trust society. That is, people no more trust authority, including scientific authority. And then the post-truth society or age, that means that it's enough that political people say, not political, uh, let's say influencers say something, that people believe them. Also, if they say fake news. Okay. And this was a serious problem for classical mathematical epidemiology. Classical mathematical epidemiology was one of the biggest success of uh, applied mathematics, no? apart from the industrial one. Because by simple model, relatively simple, of course, one can obtain K information of spread and control infectious diseases. And is very good also because it fosters interdisciplinarity, because to do good mathematical epidemiology, people must know epidemiology, public health science. It's also very good because it is intensively used by public health institution. The big problem is that due to the phenomena I mentioned before, classical mathematical epidemiology, is nowadays unfit to modern societies. No? This is a classical example. Uh, it's a, the SIR model with the constant vaccination at birth of children, and is characterized by the fact that one could assume once more or less constant apart fluctuation, statistical fluctuation, vaccination rate. And also the contagion rate was either constant or deterministic related to, for example, for the school calendar that is very well controllable. But the strong limitation of classical mathematical epidemiology is that the SIR model is inspired by chemistry. You, I don't know if you know, but Kermack and McKendrick, one was medical doctor and the other was professor of chemistry. That is, the human are approximated as molecules in a chemical reaction tank. Tank, tank pardon. The same holds, for example, for ecology. <clears throat> and the contagion is nothing else, the mathematical representation of a reaction via mass action law. This was a very successful representation of contagion because basically there is a lot of affinity that is. But the problem is now with all this phenomena and all those other things, in fact, people understood more or less 20 years ago that in classical, epidemi in classical uh, epidem mathematical epidemiology models, Uh, missed a factor, the human, human factor, that is considered the two pillars of prevention and containment of epidemics. Huh? We have pharmacological step, vaccination, and for example, for hepatitis C and B, antiviral drugs. And the non-pharmacological steps, that is social distancing, for example, both strongly depend on human behavior. And the fact is that human behavior, human beings, sorry, are active particle and with, with our psychology and behavior. Uh, and the first to stress this point in mathematical uh, epidemiology was in 78, Enzo Capasso and Gabriela Serio from Italy. Science must adapt. And so it was born 
a new branch of epidemiology, behavioral epidemiology, and this was the first book on this topic that was edited by me and by Piero Manfredi, my great friend. So, going back to the SIR model voice vaccination, the take into account of human behavior essentially means that both the contact rate and or if, if available the vaccination rate are no more constant but time varying following some laws some dynamics so we need in mathematical behavioral epidemiology we need to uh, formulate models for the contact rate beta t and the vaccination rate p a key concept we introduced is that the contact rate and or the vaccination rate p depends on the information and the rumors on the disease spread so we defined some phenomenological function, the information index. That depends not only on the current information we have on the spread of the disease. So basically, let's say, on the infectious and successful for the SIR model, but also for their past value. Because when we decide to vaccinate, we don't take into account only the news today. But we have a memory, and indeed this weight, function weight, this is a kernel. <clears throat> and in particular, if the uh, kernel is a Dirac function, is the case where the uh, we only consider current information. Uh, uh, a particular important kernel is the exponential decreasing kernel. That take into account that, of course, we, our memory of the past events is limited. And by the way, it, oh, no, it was the ringing tone to remember me. OK, so perfect. Sorry. Oh. So let's start from modeling social distancing. That is the enactment of prudent behavior, let's say, uh, that decreases the probability of getting infected. This means that <coughs> there is a decrease of the contact rate, which is the simplest behavioral model in this case, uh, is considering the contact rate as a phenomenological static function of the information index. M. Mm? Oh, so we defined in 2008 this this model where you can see beta is a a, a, a function of the information index, and how it works. If you have a lot of information that is that there is a lot of cases, B decreases. That is a decreasing function of M. And in particular, we show that depending on the memory kernel, that is depending on how much of the past and, on, and the shape of the weight, the behavior can be very different. For example, if we only take into account for our social distancing, uh, um, social distancing decisions, only current information, we have an endemic equilibrium that is globally stable. The same is if we, we model with a exponentially decreasing. But if the weight function K is unimodal, for example, as X times exponential, Oscillation can occur. What means from the viewpoint of the epidemiology? This means the human behavior can cause waves of periodically or chaotically recurrent epidemics, which is not good. 
and these all see all uh, these uh, holds not only in endemic cases, you know, this is a typical SAI model for an endemic disease, but also for outbreak of new diseases. Hmm? And also for small population, because you know, differential model holds in population biology where the population is sufficiently large. Instead, also we observed oscillations also in case of models of outbreak of new diseases. Single season, uh, you can see here there is a lot of epidemic peaks caused by the presence of this behavioral mechanism. Because in absence of this mechanism, there is a single peak. But of course, you can understand a model where simply the uh, contact rate is a phenomenological function of the uh, information has some defect. Uh, because in this case, the contact rate does not depend on the dynamical heterogeneity of the opinions in the population. Moreover, policy are all implicitly represented in that simple model. And it's impossible to disentangle them from the spontaneous, sorry, there is an error, change of behavior. So there are more refined models where the SIR model, or also more complex models, I only show this very simple case for, because it's nowadays universally known, is paired with a model of the opinion dynamics. Hmm? So the population is, in this simple case, split in people having behavior of low risk and people having behavior of high risk, and they change their strategy of behavior depending on the news information on the disease. And also, as you can observe here, I don't so I don't know if you see my pointer. Hmm? Yes, yes, we can a layer of poly a policy layer that is the intervention of policymakers. Hmm? So, and this is a simple model where there is the fraction of people that adopts behavior with low risk fraction of people adopting normal behaviors, and here is representative the effort of the state to, to induce people with high risk behavior to have low risk behavior. Hmm? This result to this model, hmm? and of course, here is how the contact rate depends on the on uh, the two fraction, on, on the fraction of people having a low risk behavior. Uh, and without going into detail, uh, we show that with appropriate pressure by the state, uh, eradication of the disease is possible. That is, if the, the work of convincing people to use low risk behavior, is enough large, the disease can disappear. Oh, and of course, in this model, you see, is a model with mutual infection of idea, because you see the switch of strategy depends on the interaction of population. But in more contemporary scenario, this is not enough. We have to add, influencers that don't want to change their opinion. Hmm? And you can see the model must be modified. You see that here is not quadratic, the terms. It's not due to co-coupling. It's simply, if you want also the action of the state to favor low risk is also unidimensional. Also the state can be considered as an influencer. So the model is different, but also in this case, which more effort, with more effort, you can eradicate the disease. 
So, the hints of public health is that even after full lockdown, uh, in case of major pandemics, state must act to favor low risk behavior in a softer ways, of course. Mm? Oh, but then it's super important to also model the behavior of policymakers. We, during the COVID, wrote this uh, paper where we defined a dynamic game, a game theory model, with a pair of metrics, and, and where the players are government, opposition, opposition and lobbies. And uh, this, uh, this was, of course, the model of the policy making, co coupled with a simple model for an infectious disease, we showed that a critical factor is the action of the interplay with government and opposition, because if the opposition and the lobbies and the indecision of government delays the, the, the enactment or lockdown, you can see that the shape is qualitatively the same, but if you observe the number of diseased people is much uh, in the right, we have early lockdown. So the number of diseased people is low, much lower of in the left case, uh, where the, the enactment of the lockdown is delayed due to the, let's say, interplace. Mm. So, it's important, the model suggests that government must not pay attention to lobbies and to opposition, must, must act unequally for the good of citizens. Hmm. Then there is not only lockdown, because in case of, uh, unfortunate case of large pandemics, is very important the post lockdown. And for example, in many countries in France and Italy has been developed a multi-layer, so-called the tiered policy, where, uh, let's say, restriction, not lockdown, but social distancing uh, restriction, are, are uh, enacted, depends on the level of the prevalence of disease. Uh, this, for example, in Italy, in a given period, there was three region, four region, three in North Italy and one in South Italy that had a lot of case. In South Italy, two intermediate region with intermediate number of case and uh, uh, the vast majority in a normal number of case. OK, so in this case, the state use information to define. Uh, but instead of using a unique information index, they use multiple information index that con consider deaths, uh, incidents, prevalence, of hospitalization, quarantine of the people, and socioeconomic impact of restrictions. So, in a paper with uh, Pierre Manfredi, uh, Pierre Alexandre Blimon of Iria in Paris. Uh, we defined a, a complex model that faithful replied what happened, for example, in Italy, a little bit also in France, where we consider a multiple index and we modeled more or less what was done by the various countries. And the results is a complex delayed dynamical system because the index are normalized with respect to a past period. So, and we made some simulation that showed that depending on the level of, and on the type of the uh, information used, you can have very different uh, uh, impact. Okay. Oh, but what about vaccination rate? Uh, of course, the most simple case is asked for the, the contact rate when we consider that P is simple a function of the information rate. Mm? And in particular, I very briefly show you this model we published with Malai and Samiran and Piero uh, last year, where 
also spaces taken into the account. And here there is an, a further, let's say, layer of difficulty, because if you take into account space, you must not only wait, respect the past information, but also res take into account the, let's say, uh, distribution, spatial distribution of the information on the spread of disease. So there is a second kernel that a kernel is space. And depending if the kernel is local or non local, you can have very different behavior. And in particular, it is particularly interesting the interplay between the spatial kernel and the temporal kernel. Hmm? So the system has endemic equilibria that are homogeneous from the spatial viewpoint. However, the interplay uh, between the special, spatial kernel and the, the temporal kernel, and we, we take here the characteristic time of the, the temporal kernel as a bifurcation parameter, we obtain that if mm, the characteristic time, the, the memory, let's say, of past event can induce Turing instability, that is, the spatial uniform equilibrium is no more a uniform equilibrium, but is as a spatial pattern. What means that there are a lot of localized cluster of disease, which is very bad. But even worse, if theta is larger, we observed spatiotemporal chaos. And this is very, very nasty from the public health viewpoint. Because you don't not only have clusters of disease, but they change in a very regular fashion in time. So it's much more difficult to, to fight, let's say. Of course, and I, I think I'm, no, I, I have maybe some other minutes. Also, in this case, the um, model where the vaccination rate is simply a phenomenological uh, function of the information rate is a simple model. And also, in this case, we can consider the distribution of the opinion. Pe parents that vaccine their children, the paper parents that do not vaccine. Hmm? And the mutual interplay between the opinion dynamics, no, you see the opinion dynamics influence the disease spread because it determines the vaccination rate. In turn, the news, the, 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 the information on the disease spreads enters in the, uh, the opinion dynamics, of course. Not surprisingly, the equation for the opinion dynamics are very similar. Hmm? And also in this case, of course, the state can favor vaccination. Uh, you can see there is this term that represents on the flow from the compartment of people that are against the vaccine to towards people that in favor of vaccine. In turn, the dynamic of vaccination is influenced on, on one hand on the information on the vaccine on the disease spread and is negative effect at the vaccination rate by the information of the occurrence of side effect. Hmm? So you can see there is C, uh, you see C determines the switching of strategy from anti-vaccine to pro-vaccine is of course an increasing function of the information of the spread of disease. Whereas D, uh, which, which determines, uh, influences the velocity of uh, 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 changing strategy from pro-vaccine to anti-vaccine is influenced on the news of vaccine side effect that, of course, is proportional to the number of vaccine. And also in this case, it's possible to show that if the effort of the, of, of the state is appropriately large, uh, eradication of the disease is possible. And uh, I I finish it.
Hello? Yes. Okay. Yes. You have finished, right? Yes. Oh, it was okay. perfect in time. Perfect in time. Thank you very much, Alberto, for this really uh, interesting and important topic. So please, maybe we have some uh, time for discussion, please, if there are questions from our listeners and waiting uh, for other questions. Uh, I have some of them. And in particular, during this COVID pandemic, and this is also was very interesting to observe that different countries adopted uh, different strategies. Not all of them were rational, but there were really several different examples. Uh, now, several years later, is there some analysis of these different strategies in different countries? So which of them? So in the beginning, it was a complete con confusion. Can we, can uh, several years later now, can we be a little bit more uh, rational, a little bit more prepared for future epidemics from this point of view, taking into account experience from different countries? Yes, this is a very important question. Uh, first of all, it's quite amazing, but uh, when uh, COVID uh, outbreaks, out, outbreak it, luckily we can use it in the past, a number of very rational pandemic plan existed. Because after the, the SARS in 2003 and the avian flu, not brought the damage swine flu, sorry, uh, big flu pandemics. Mm, it luckily was not so terrible as because the original swine flu uh, was very lethal. What happened is this that European Union, USA, Russia, China, all the nation invested a lot of money in pandemic plans. I participated for four years to a European Union project on especially the role of uh, communication of risk to the population. And all people knew two things, that in few years there would have been a pandemic due to either a new flu big strain or to a new a SARS strain what happened because COVID is a mutation of SARS well what happened that no government implemented those plans oh so I think that now theoretically theoretically the lesson should have been learned that is, in case should be a new epidemics where, because the fact of the COVID is was simply, and it was a SARS causing very severe pneumonia. So they, for various reasons, mainly economic, Prefer not to, to strictly control at the start. The result was a huge waste of uh, human lives and energy. Mm? So I think the lesson has been learned. But I'm not sure. Because the fact is that COVID showed a lot of rationality but also irrationality or people remember, remember president trump suggesting to ingest in bleach and a lot of people had his problem uh, so it's impossible to say that is from scientific viewpoint there is a huge mass of literature but what i can say there is also a, a problem in the scientific literature on covid because I and Piero Manfredi were charged by WHO to write a report. 
on uh, modeling of behavior. And in reality, the vast majority of works on COVID did not consider proper model of behavior. That is a huge number of models consider behavior, but simply that let's decrease a parameter. Let's increase a parameter. But you know very well that this is not a model of behavior. Is the model the impact of parameter linked to behavior? Some other included mobility, better than nothing, but also that is not really modeling the behavior. So in reality, there is the possibility, the challenge, very positive challenge for scientists to start now with the past data of COVID to model the role of behavior. Another problem was that some countries had different attitude with data. That is, for example, USA decided to make public all kinds of data and encouraged whatever to model COVID and prepared a vast pool of, I think, I think 20, 30 centers uh, to which they modeled COVID and then compared the the compared the, the outcome of model and made some statistical analysis. Other countries instead decided to centralize that is, we trust Mr. X and only Mr. X will model the COVID in that country. So I don't know which was the best strategy. So the, I, I think that, OK, we know a lot of things, but we don't know completely the, the, the auto model behavior for COVID and how to model the rationality. Yes. Uh, so so I'm relatively optimistic. Uh, well, uh, first of all, uh, before continuing our, our discussion, I noticed that in the background of your screen, the uh, the the fires, the the lights are moving. Is it a real picture or it is not? No, like no, no, no. It's something uh, nice, nice from Microsoft Teams. Yeah, I am okay. in the car kitchen of my home. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 not so. There was a little bit of snow. With very good for. Uh, uh, teleconference with Russia, let's say. I'm my my as I you remember I sent you because I'm from South Italy, but mm. my my town is very snowy. Okay. We have so snow in April, in May also. So. Oh, right. oh yeah, so. Well, uh, if we come back to our discussion, so human behavior is so uh, sometimes sometimes uh, very unpredictable. Uh, with some such a mixture of rational or irrational behavior that it can be, I'm afraid, difficult to describe it with some simple mathematical like functions or dependencies. And uh, uh, sometimes we don't know. Some we, it's not it concerns not only epidemic but uh, uh, any other question. Sometimes some news makes a huge outbreak. Uh, uh, it reacts a lot of attention. Some, some other time there is no any reaction. So this this is really strange, and I think that in the moment no nobody really understand how how this opinion dynamics because you mentioned opinion opinion dynamics, especially with social media and all these networks, kind but of the, the positive fact that it, now we have a lot of data, and now we have very powerful deep learning based. And methods of analysis of analysis of human behavior you mean in general of the the data from social network yeah so this is, this I is think very that uh, this is very interesting yes i'm not familiar with that so so what what uh, artificial intelligence can tell us about human behavior i, I, I think a lot a lot i, I think a lot but the, the, this a very interesting fact is the following, which is the, 
the lesson we are learning from chat GTP, for example, mm -hmm. is that human creativity and human reactions are more, much more mechanical than we thought. Mechanical, you mean you, you can describe it with some mathematical models, for example? Right? Uh, yes, at least statistical model more than mathematical. Oh, statistical. Because a, a, a very stupid system, although very large software, is able to, able to perfectly write new text never written by other people. So maybe it's the same also for uh, the behavior. Any case, the science is in its infancy. Let's yes, say, as this, for in general, the search of physics is in its infancy. So, well, uh, in the same lines, it's not, not only the question of like rational or irrational behavior, but also I think of education. Uh, oh, yes, absolutely. And, and, and of some simple common sense. For example, uh, this, I remember this very long discussion, do we need, uh, do, in the beginning of COVID, do we need masks or not? I was, I was just shocked by that. During several months, this question was discussed in France, whether ah. we need to, to have masks or not. And uh, that, it, was, it was really very no, strange. The, after the, three, I, after, the after three, yeah. This is very funny because all dependent on the stocks of masks from the various states. For example, yeah. in Italy, apart people that objected because a little bit claustrophobic, nobody objected to masks, for example. Well, there I think people, that there was yeah. no, at a political level. In, in France, since they put in the trash can the, yeah. their stock of masks, huh? Uh, it's very famous, uh, explained for uh, non-French people, yeah, yeah, uh, that the 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 uh, official speaker of the government used to say that the masks not only were not uh, maybe useful, but that wearing a mask was a surgical maneuver. That is, uh, which of course is absolutely false. Because the problem that this is the link, do you remember uh, the, the slide I showed with post-trust society and the post-truth uh, age? Because post-truth consider the fact that a personal a singer or famous politician going to television say vaccination is linked to autism. A lot of people will believe them. Mm. And at the same time, we have the post-trust. A scientist go there and if you say in scientific way that is with prudence, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, some scientific statement, you are no more not trusted. So this is the strange combination. It's not yes. more important the truth of what you say, but how you say this. And the perception of the people that people have of you. That is, you can be a very corrupt, but very well hidden corruption. You can say whatever you want. <laughs> Whereas if you are a little bit corrupt, but you say something strong verity, or you are a scientist and say in the scientific method that is, we have proof that vaccines are not harmful, you are not believed. An anti-vax leader, you say, Vaccine, a lot of cases of autism due to vaccine, and people believe so you not. And for example, there is the, the famous paradox of false bill balance. Because television, podcasts, YouTubers invite in the same discussion a scientist and a leader of antivax. But it's for equity. But it's not a true equity because scientists work at all this life or her life of vaccine. The anti-vax read some internet page on people that become green uh, after vaccination. And, 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 and the worst, the worst is, I should not say, cases of scientists 
that are anti-vax. This is totally madness yeah. because you can be a scientist also good scientist, but having ancestral fear of injection because when you were baby. <laughs> I had to, one day I became furious with a colleague that came in my office and said, hey, Alberto, but you don't believe there is thousands of people whose hand reminded so and so after the vaccination. I became so furious that a colleague had to enter and to physically remove the colleague before I kill him. <laughs> okay, very good. We should not kill our colleagues. Uh, no, but, no. <laughs> yes, but but from this point of view, uh, well, this this discussion continues already several centuries, uh, and uh, also in France, I think in the 18th century, uh, it was a big discussion of using or not uh, vaccination. It was already done in in Britain, but in France they refused to do it. Uh, my last question, and I think for maybe important is about, I return back independently of irrationality uh, of human behavior, but uh, can we determine the best strategy of social distancing and lockdown? I give to, to explain my question, I give two examples. The first example of Sweden, we remember that in the beginning of this pandemic, they did not do or almost the social distancing and lockdown. And the opposite example is China, where this uh, social distancing, social measures of control were very strict. At the end, two years uh, after the beginning, when China removed these measures of social distancing as a, under the pressure of people, there was a huge explosion of this epidemic. So what is the best way to do it or not to do it? I mean, social distancing or maybe some intermediate uh, way, and then it should be maybe cal calculated with mathematical model how to do it. So what is your I, opinion? But my opinion is, uh, is the following in that. Uh, first well, of all, China or Sweden? This is a question. Ah, uh, the, the, the answer is the objective function, <laughs> that is, which was the first, the first uh, objective for the lockdown, the first lockdowns, the occupation of emergency unit beds. Lockdown was basically forced, not not only for the number of people that died of COVID, but also and mainly because the COVID occupied all the intensive care units beds, all. You remember at the given point in Lyon, for example, the occupation rate was 120%, which means that all the, all the beds were occupied, and the 20% had to be sent in, in, in other regions, also in Germany and Spain. So, the removal of the, the lockdown in China is true that caused a lot of uh, new cases, also deaths, but a percent of deaths minor because it was a new strain. very different and milder than the first one. And the second, since it was milder, the occupancy rate of the emergency uh, intensive care unit was not fully occupied. So it's very, very important because when you must optimize, you must have objective function. So on one hand, you have the first of all is energy because energy in the unit means that uh, normal disease continues to happen, infarction, uh, stroke, cerebral strokes, uh, 
uh, serious car incident, etc., etc., etc. So the very big problem because a lot of people that are following the theory of complots say, oh, but the mortality rate, the lethality due to COVID was not so large, so and so and so. No, the very big problem of COVID was the the fact that all the intensive care units were full. All beds in uh, pneum, uh, pneumological units, non-emergency, but were full. All the beds in infectious diseases were full. So this was the very big challenge. What I don't see now in politics is a significant increment of intensive care units, medical doc, because beds means medical doctors, nurses, and electronic and other devices. We should be ready. We must be ready to new pandemics. For example, another case, Ebola. If Ebola restarts and in Europe and, and enters in Europe, we will we would remember as a fairly tail period the lockdown for COVID. Because the needs for Ebola patients are so large that in one day probably all the emergency units, because they, re they require a level of isolation that is crazy. So, uh, I hope that the government learned some lessons and will enact. Because the fact that in the first in the first phase of the pandemics, the objective function was not to damage the economics. And this was the tragic error, because a small damage on economics in the start would have avoided a huge economic catastrophe after. Right. OK, Alberta, thank you very much for all these comments. And if there are no other questions from our listeners, from the audience. So then we will uh, finish our today's seminar. Thank you again. It was a pleasure to meet you and to discuss Grazie. these very, very important questions. Ciao. And also, of course, uh, thanks Bye. to all, all our listeners and friends who are here. Okay. Thank you to all people. Ciao. Grazie. Ciao. Ciao, Vitaly. Ciao. Yes. Thanks. Bye. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. Yeah.